I am 99% sure this is gonna be a mess when I get this out of here. This is not what you want to see. So this is just root bound as heck. So let me tell you the story of these trees. Um, uh, I'm gonna plant these in these two big containers that we have on the edge of the driveway. And the plan was to do pagoda dogwoods in here. Um, I had those last time. They lived very happily in those pots for two years. And then they wanted to be out of the pots and I moved them out and I transplanted to them to the landscape where they are doing well. So unfortunately, at some point since I bought those two multi-stem pagoda dog trees three years ago, apparently the world decided that they didn't like multi-stem pagoda dogwoods and I couldn't find any multi-stem pagoda dogwoods this year. And I'm not one to uh, repeat container designs very often, but uh, that one worked really well and I loved it. And that was my plan until I couldn't find them. So, and I did not want single stem trees for these two pots. Um, when you have two pots flanking an area and you put a single stem anything in them, I feel like there's a certain amount of formality that comes with that that I didn't care for for this spot or think was appropriate for this spot. So I had to sort of act on the fly and I found these two birch trees. There are definitely advantages to these trees. They're beautiful. I think they'll look great here. And um, they're hardy enough that I should be able to leave them out in the containers, although we will move the containers to a different area for winter because this has to be clear for clearing snow. But these were not cheap trees, and that kind of gave me pause. But I thought, well, you know, the pagoda dogwoods definitely were worth it because that was two years of a centerpiece in a container that I didn't have to buy. And you guys know how expensive containers can get if you get kind of crazy with putting something fancy in the middle of them. And I would have done that because I wanted some, wanted and needed some size there. So I figured these would be, oh my gosh, this is so bad. So I figured these would be uh, okay. And you know, I bought them from a, a very busy, pretty well-respected garden center. And I didn't get concerned until I have only had them home for a couple of days. And I noticed even though it's not been particularly dry here or particularly hot here, they were drying out really quick. And I thought that can't be good. And then I looked at the top of them and I thought those are definitely planted too deep. And uh, my intention with this video was to actually show you um, how to clear off soil from trees that have been planted too deeply. And then I realized that all the roots were right at the top. So I'm like, oh, it's, it's run out of room and it's popping up to the top. And now we have this situation. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little mad right now. Uh, nobody should be selling trees like this. This is not okay. These trees have been I don't know how long they've been in this pot, but whatever it is, it's way too long. And if you're gonna sell a tree like this, you mark it down, because this is not okay. So I have to try to get through this mass of roots here um, because there's no way these are gonna spread out on their own and do anything. And it's just gonna be a battle for water forever. And of course, I'm going to have to really treat this thing with kid gloves because it's also already all leafed out. So it's really going to be needing moisture. I will have to stay on top of it from the get go here. So I'm going to put in a couple of root zone feeder packs because these guys are going to need all the help they can get, unfortunately. So ordinarily I wouldn't do this halfway, but I want to make sure all these little roots that I've now exposed 
are really well saturated so that nothing dries out in there. So while I'm watering, I'll just tell you what the soil is in here because the soil is a little bit different if you're gonna be planting something like a tree or a shrub in a big container. Um, regular old potting mix alone won't work for that. You need some more nutrients than that. So I am using the Organics Mechanics planting mix in here. That's the compost blend and quite a bit of it. Most of the bottom of this pot, and this is entirely soil in this pot, by the way. Most of the bottom of this pot is that. And then I mixed in um, some of their container mix as well as some biochar blend in here. And that's what's in here so far. I'm not sure how much I'll even need to top this off. But, okay, I think we've got, we're pretty well saturated. The main thing I have to do is make sure that this thing is straight. So when I'm planting up pots, I rarely sort of pack the soil because you want annuals to have that nice, easy root run. However, if I don't pack it a little bit in this one, what will happen is the root ball of the tree will just stay high and everything will sink around it. Now that I'm mad at these trees, I'm gonna tell you some other issues with them. Uh, I wish they hadn't been pruned up so high. I don't know what that is. I wish they hadn't been pruned up so high for this purpose. They'd be fine for in the landscape. Um, also, um, I didn't realize when I bought this one that there was a really bad crossing branch there. There is nothing I can do about that now because it's important to me to have the same number of trunks in these two pots. And uh, I didn't notice at the time because it was kind of buried in the stack of tree on you know, the row of trees. So I guess we're learning some lessons on these. Okay, so I am taking off quite a bit of soil here because this is just there's no root flare anywhere near this. And I'm probably not going to be able to get it to get to it, to be honest, because the roots are so bad on this. Well, at least I could get that one out of the pot. So this is interesting. The trees are not centered on the root ball. So you want to make sure that you're centering the actual trunks and not the root ball because they're not necessarily the same thing. All right, let's get to some fun parts. I get to plant some annuals, finally. It's the first ones of the whole year. Um, now, keep in mind that when I planned this and ordered these plants for this container, this was supposed to be pagoda dogwood. So I wanted to go really simple on the bottom, just a simple skirt of kind of simple flowers at the bottom. Now that we've switched to the birch tree with the long legs, that might have to change. We're still gonna go with this, but I'm just, putting an asterisk here and reserving the right to add something to this if need be. But this is a new plant, new for this year or new for next year, but you can find it out there. I've seen it in a few places. Uh, this is Safari Dawn, uh, South African Phlox. Apparently the common name for this plant is James Britannia. I've literally never heard of that. I don't know where I've been. Uh, anyway, cute little, now this is the pink and yellow one. There's another one I think called safari sky or something that's blue but this has um sort of a pink and yellow almost tinged purple flower on it. tiny little things um, doesn't ask for a lot isn't going to need a ton of fertilizer um, and it's just going to be simple this is going to get only get six to 12 inches tall looks like it gets 10 inches wide I'm going to do four in each pot i think at that i could have actually done six in each pot by the way these pots are either 24 or 26 inches wide. I can't recall which it is. I think it's 26 inches. So even though these don't want a lot of fertilizer, uh, I think a time release would be good to work into the top. I use Osmocote for this. Um, so I am not organic in my containers. So um, I will use a synthetic, I will use synthetic fertilizers uh, in my containers. 
And uh, Osmocote has always worked well for me for this purpose. Now it's gonna be a little hard because this root ball is not centered in here. Some of these are gonna have to get smudged a little bit, I think. Like, oh, got a big hole right there. Yeah, like on this side. So he's gonna have to sort of get flattened. Okay, there is a 90% chance I'm gonna add something else to this. I just don't know what it is yet, but good for now. So I think once we get these dialed in, I'm really gonna like the look of these trees right here. You know, what attracted me to these was that, um, well, first of all, the multi-stem thing, which we've talked about, but you know, the, there's a lot of movement in these trees and I like that a lot. There's actually even some sound, you know, when they rustle around. Um, and of course the stems will turn white in time. Whether these are in a pot long enough for that to happen, that remains to be seen. Okay, so like I said, I am reserving the right to add some more annuals to the bottom of this. We'll kind of see how these grow. I've never, obviously never grown um, this Safari Dawn before. Uh, but what I am gonna do next is I'm gonna mulch this pot um, just with some pine bark vines or something like that. Because there are so many roots at the surface of that root ball, I think it'd be a really good idea to uh, make sure those are um, well mulched and keep it moist because birch trees do want a good amount of water too. So I'll probably be watering these pots pretty much every day, which has not been the case in the past. Okay, I hope you're having a great day in your garden. Get good trees and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.